Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Before we get started, I have an announcement to make. We are so excited here at the Hinkle Shop. We have surpassed a thousand subscribers on YouTube. So that's a big thank you to y'all. I can't, I can't thank you enough. Thanks for getting us there. We're gonna just keep going, going, going. So in today's project though, I got a, a friend who from time to time sees these things on uh, the internet that she'd like to see if I can build. She presents me with these challenges and it's not Lisa. Lisa does it too, but it's not Lisa in this case. But we're gonna try and make this project for her and see if we can pull it off. We're gonna use the old shape Poco. We're gonna use some other tools in the shop here. Stick with me. Let's get started. Okay, so this is going to be a practice run, so we're going to take this old piece of plywood that I found out in the wood pile. We're going to trim out these screw holes here, get them out, clean it off, clean it off this way if we have to, put it in the old Shapoko and create this project out of scrap to begin with, just to prove a proof of concept. So to cut this off, I'm going to use my little Rockwell saw. You see it there. Um, I'm not sponsored by them, but I did do a review video and I'll put a link to that video in the description. Now there's going to be something interesting that happens here. If you look up in the top right corner there's a blue door. You can see movement in that door. There's somebody waiting to come in. That door does not have a latch on it. So you're going to see me halfway through this cut and somebody is going to insist. Here he comes, the boss. And by that I mean Mr. Atlas. He's quite a character. Now what you couldn't see was the blade was loose. It was stopping on me as I tried to run it through the board there. Unplug the saw for safety. Now this saw comes with a nice blade stop. It's right there. That red button comes with the Allen wrench to tighten the blade. We'll put a little arm strong on that and it'll be good to go. Yeah, and the tool goes back into the little compartment there on the lead cord. After cleaning off those holes, I'm going to cut two strips here, 12 inches wide, and realistically they should have been 14. Here's my one-sided sled. We're going to cut these off at 12. Again, they should have been 14 inches. Now when I use one of these things, I use a board on the off side. You can see it there sliding with the plywood. That prevents it from pinching on the blade. So what are we going to do with those? This. This is our clamping system. You've seen it before. Drive those wedges in and that piece will never move. Remove the dust cover. We need to change the bit. We're using a 1 quarter inch end mill for this project. Put that in, tighten it down. I'm also going to do something here I don't typically do which is go off of the corner, left bottom corner of the stock. I typically go off of dead center. You can see me using the touch plate here to find zero for all three axes, X, Y, and Z. And we're ready to rock and roll. Dust cover on, power to the router. So this is what happens when you take your eye off your machine for two seconds and your dust collection plugs. You get to clear the obstruction and get out the auxiliary vacuum to clean this up. When you're doing multiple pieces of the same size, do yourself a favor and put in a dead stop like you see here on the left next to my name the Hinkle. I just moved my square. What I've done is marked where the original stock was. I'm squaring it up with the lateral fence as I call it. And we're going to drive those in so it creates a definite position to put your next piece in so you can put one in right after the other and just tell the machine to start and that way it's more efficient, it's faster, and it takes a lot of the guesswork out for you. What I'm doing here is pulling that screw back out and adjusting for square with the block itself. I had chewed into the fence just a little bit with the metal square, not the metal square with the router, 
and it had messed up the face of that fence. But now we're ready to go again. Put the new piece in, slide the clamping bar down, put the wedges in. No messing around, no muss, no fuss. We're ready to go. When this piece finishes, we'll take it out, slide the next one in, rinse and repeat. You're about to see a little boo-boo here. This clamping system works excellent as long as you remember to drive those wedges in to tighten them up. I said in the beginning, it'll never move. But guess what? It will move if you don't drive the wedges in to make the stock tight against the fence. As you're about to see here, when that router starts, it grabs that plywood and shifts it to the right. Luckily, the damage that was done is done on a piece where it's going to be cut away anyway. And here it goes. Sliding away. Uh-oh, we have a problem. And as you'll see, I quickly pushed it back to the left and pinched it in by hand and then shut the machine off and tightened up those wedges. So by now, you gotta be wondering, what the L is he doing with all them L's? What if I did this? Bottom, next one, next one. Glue those together and put this top one on. Put a piece of plexiglass here. Put a piece of, or a groove up in here. Any thoughts? What if I took this stuff and dropped it through the slot? Now you get the picture! Now I know it's just a practice piece, but there's no reason why I can't make it nice. And while we wait for the compressor to charge up, somebody needs some attention. The real star of this channel, old Mr. Atlas. What a good boy. Okay, here's a trick for you. When cutting plexiglass with your bandsaw, use a block of wood. Don't let yours get stuck in the miter slot like that. The wood is so that the plexiglass won't slide under the fence right there, like this. Put the block in, slide your glass up against your block, slide the fence and the block over, line up your mark where you're going to cut the glass off, lock your fence down, and make the cut. Push them both through at the same time.
Okay, everybody, so sometimes when you start out with a practice piece, it comes out too nice to be a practice piece, so I guess this L will have to go to my lovely wife, Lisa, and maybe it'll teach her to save a few pennies. All right, everybody, there you are. A practice L that turned out to be more than just a practice L, but that gives me the ability to make the ones out of some better lumber. For our friend who's looking for them, she's looking for a whole bunch of letters, not just an L. So the L with it, I'm going to end this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of the video. Give us a like, share, and a comment. I always enjoy reading the comments. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.